Well, welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation, the channel that brings you your team every single day, run by a fan for you, the fans. Guys, welcome to what day is it today? Wednesday. Yes, welcome to Wednesday, one day away from the huge Europa League deciding fixture out in Seville as Rangers will take on Real Betis. And what does that make it? The Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Probably four days away, obviously, from Sunday and the League Cup final against that. Uh, those, those, um, what should we call them? Uh, white fluffy people from up the coast. So the focus obviously has to be on the best game. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit in this video towards the mid to end of the video. We're also going to talk about a prospective uh, loanee coming in in January who's been heavily linked with the club. We're also going to debunk some loan rumours as well. And uh, just to obviously pick up uh, a few things on our channel. Guys, remember, this is not just my channel. It is also your channel. Uh, you can find us in all these places um, at GRN1872 on X or Twitter or whatever the hell it's called these days, guys. And also, good news, the channel is now officially verified. It has its blue tick on Twitter as well. So please check us out over there. Also, remember, if you didn't check it out last night, check out the podcast it is obviously now available on the channel. Myself and the fabulous Laura Hatton from TikTok. Uh, we're talking all things Rangers. Laura is a Wishaw girl, a Rangers girl. Uh, massive fan of the team. So come and listen to what we had to talk about last night. We are talking Dundee. We were talking Aberdeen. We were talking Betis. We were talking about the club in general. So come and check. Please, obviously, go back and check out that podcast. Now, lots of news from yesterday. Obviously, we dropped the video, um, one of the only channels actually to drop the video on Jose Cifuentes um, and the fact that his appeal against his red card had been rejected by the SFA. I don't think there's any surprise that it was rejected, no matter whether you think it's a red card or a yellow card, no matter what your opinion is on Jose Cifuentes, and we all have our opinions on Jose Cifuentes, Personally, I don't think he's proved anything yet. Yet, I think he does suffer a little bit from being too slow on the ball, too slow to use the ball, too slow to distribute the ball. He doesn't appear to be up to the speed with the Scottish game yet, and that is a that is a massive concern for me. Um, so you know, whatever you think <coughs> think of him as a player, look, I don't think there was any way that card was ever going to get overturned. Look, call me Mister Conspiracy Theorist, call me Mister Blue Goggles. Call me what you wish. <coughs> Excuse me. But look, we all know the media don't like us. We all know the SFA don't like us. We all know the referees don't like us. So at the end of the day, I don't think there was much chance that card was ever going to get overturned. It, of course, gives uh, Philippe Clement a big headache going into Sunday's game. Now, Suentes will be available for the Betis game on Thursday. His suspension doesn't extend to European games. It only uh, only covers domestic games so look he will be out apparently for the Aberdeen game on Sunday but he will also be missing for the St Johnston game on Wednesday night as well so two games we were without him and given obviously the paucity of midfielders we currently have at the club um, it is a worry isn't it you know given the fact that um, Tom Lawrence is injured Nicholas Raskin is injured Ryan Jack is injured although we don't know what Ryan Jack's condition is or where Ryan Jack is in terms of his recovery Philippe Clement obviously keeps that very close to his chest. So Philippe will have some big decisions to make ahead of Sunday's game against Aberdeen. Who does he play in central midfield alongside probably John Lundstrom as he's probably the only fit central midfielder at the club. Now there's been some talk about Dujon Sterling continuing that job that he did on Sunday against, uh, sorry, Saturday. I keep thinking saying Sunday because we keep playing on a Sunday, but it was Saturday, wasn't it? Um, there was another great result on Sunday. But um, yeah, he did that job on against Dundee. He was very solid defensively. He had that shot um, that hit the post. He was very unlucky not to score. You know, I was listening to Stevie Clifford on uh, Rangers Review and he made a good point. You know, Dujon didn't really influence the game and run the games, but perhaps it's a bit of a case of maybe moving roles around and getting John Lundstrom to do the box-to-box -box and the kind of, managing the tempo of the game, although, unfortunately, John does slow it down a little bit. So there is other options there. Um, John Suter can play as a, as a defensive midfield player. Also, he's very good at emerging with the ball, bringing the ball out from the back. So that is obviously a valuable skill and something that, that could be effective. But, in, but there is, of course, Leon King as well. Now, Leon King has played in the defensive midfield role, not only for Rangers B, but also for Scotland under-21s. Um, now, I know Leon has had a lack of first team minutes and hasn't played much first team football and only had those few minutes um, against Dundee on Saturday. Hey, you got it right. Um, 
But there's certainly some talk that possibly Leon King could do that job. You know, the, the, there are options there. It is very much going to be about thinking outside the box, about thinking, you know, who can step up. And that's what it has to be, you know, in professional football, in all professional sports, there has to be that next man up mentality that someone can step up and take the place of a player who's injured or a player who is suspended. And that is certainly going to be the case on Sunday and on Wednesday as well. I mean, there are other options. We dropped Todd Cantwell back, but then who do you put in the 10 role? I really, really do not want to see Sam Lammers on that pitch. He is genuinely, absolutely hopeless. So, look, best option for me is going to be Sterling or King. Um, I'd like to see both of them. Look, I would love to see Bailey Rice play. Sorry, RM, but I'd love to see Bailey Rice play. But it looks just look like Bailey and the manager don't quite have the same idea about Bailey's future, that Bailey is perhaps better. The manager thinks in the under-21s and the Bs and not ready for first-team football yet. Maybe that's what Philippe Clermont thinks. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm just kind of trying to guess what is going on with Bailey Rice. You know, I would love to see Bailey play. Bailey is a class act. And, you know, looking back to when he played last season against Livy and, you know, the odd times he got some minutes last season, he did look very much at home in the first team. And it is going to be very much a case of thinking outside the box on Sunday. Now, Rangers have been linked with a move for a lone player from the English Premier League. Um, Mason Holgate, who is a central defender from Everton, he's currently on loan with Southampton. However, he hasn't had a lot of first-team minutes with Southampton, more because of Southampton having two settled centre-halves. Um, because of this, Sean Dyche, who is the current Everton manager, is, um, according to all reports coming out of Merseyside, ready to recall Mason Holgate to uh to, to Merseyside uh, and send him out on loan somewhere else in January because he wants him to get some first team minutes somewhere. Uh the only concern I suppose is that Mason is a right sided centre back. He's not a left sided centre back um but is described as a very talented lad. He's 27 years old um so he is an experienced player. He's not a young player. So it could be a case of uh, a loan with an option to buy. Although at 27 is he really someone who you could put into that um kind of, you know, that, that that player trading model, is he going to have a value further down the line? I doubt it. Or is this just a short-term loan to cover a gap, um, to cover a lack of depth in, well, actually, no, I'll rephrase that, a lack of quality depth at the centre-back position. Let's have a little look at some stats to do with Mason Holgate. So he's uh, an Everton player, but he's also had uh, spells on loan at West Brom, Barnsley and Southampton. He's played in the Premier League, He's played in the Championship, uh, which obviously we know is a very tough league. And he's also played in the Championship playoffs as well. Now, he's actually made 149 Premier League appearances for Everton, scoring five goals and with five assists. So he does have Premier League experience, which, you know, is definitely a benefit. You know, the Premier League is a very strong league and playing at centre-back. And he can also play right-back as well. Um, it certainly gives you a chance to come against some of the world's top players. He's also played for Everton under-23s. He also spent a uh, season on loan at West Brom, where he made 23 appearances, scoring one goal and getting four assists. Barnsley, a season on loan at Barnsley, where he made 22 appearances with one goal and one assist. Um, has only made five appearances for Southampton on loan this season. You know, the vast majority of his appearances have come in the Premier League. Uh, three goals in the Premier League, five assists in the Premier League. So he does have that Premier League pedigree, that Premier League experience. And it certainly seems that Rangers are keeping tabs on him, according to reports from a number of very reliable media sources. However, also, according to the reports, championship clubs Watford and Middlesbrough are also interested. Now, if Rangers truly are interested and do want to bring Mason Holgate to the club, we do have that huge selling, though, those huge selling points, should I say, trophy lifts. We have an option, obviously, of winning another three trophies this season, the European trophy at some point, because we will be in Europe after after Christmas. So there we go. European competition, European level football, something that I think will certainly attract Sean Dyche to sending him to Rangers. Not only that, but, you know, the Scottish Cup, the, the still in the league, um, a number of games coming up, a chance to play alongside players like Conor Goldson and like Leon Balligan, James Tavernier, you know, some and also play in front of Jack Butland, who is obviously one of the best goalkeepers in Britain. So, and work under a fantastic manager like Philippe Clement. So there is a lot of selling points, as well as the phenomenal uh, Ibrox and over 50,000 people to play in front of, very much getting you ready to play Premier League football. And, you know, no disrespect to Middlesbrough and Watford, but they've certainly got nothing think along those lines to offer that we can offer. So it is, I think, you know, certainly something that he could be thinking of. I don't think this will be a permanent 
uh, move uh, unless Holgate comes in and is absolutely sensational. I think it would be very much a, a move to cover um, a few bases at the back and uh, to give a little bit of depth to that back, that sent that defensive position. You know, we we do know that I think you know Leon's not getting any younger. Connor can't play every game. Ben Davis has flattered to deceive. John Suter, you know, had struggled in his in the European game. So I think there is a need for a centre-back and Mason Holgate could be a very good temporary stopgap measure. Look, I'd love to know what you think. Is he the sort of player we're looking for? Is he the sort of guy we would like to see? You know, it's only, it would only be a loan at this stage. But like I said, if he pulls up trees, if he looks sensational, if he looks phenomenal, then look, at the end of the day, he could be someone we go for. Uh, it is, like I said, an option that uh, Sean Dyche is looking at, bringing him back. He is, like I said, on loan at Southampton, but it does seem that it is a case of the fact that we do want to bring someone in on loan at the back. And I think that's a sensible move. You know, January is not the time to be rebuilding your squad. It's not the time to be replenishing your numbers with, with, with you know, it, it, it is really a seller's market. You know, they can hold you to ransom. Uh, and I think getting someone in on loan and then obviously using the summer as the main time to rebuild is very much, you know, the plan, I think, for Philippe Clement and Niels Coppen. Holgate played, has played under 21 football, never represented the England full team, but, you know, does have a little bit of international experience there as well. A few years ago, granted, he is 27. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. So that's a, that's a loan target, a possible loan target, Mason Holgate. Interesting, very, very, very interesting, but no doubt. Rangers will be busy in January. I think there is a need to go and get at least three or four players. I think a winger has to be another priority, a left back, a centre forward. You know, Philippe Clement himself has already said that a centre forward is something we do need and something he will be looking to bring in in January. So look, at the end of the day, this is the thing. This is this has to be the thing. We've got to get a centre back, a centre forward and a winger for a staff. I think a left back can probably, unless Ridvan does leave in January, I think can probably wait till the summer. Now, this week is huge. We know this week is absolutely huge. We know it's huge. We know it's massive. We know that I think all of us would rather win Sunday than Thursday, but we, we're all greedy, aren't we? We're Rangers fans. We want to win every game. And that's what Rangers should do. Rangers should win every game. And as I said to Laura on the podcast last night, wouldn't it be just a Rangers thing to go and win in Spain and with everyone doubting we can do that, given our record on Spanish soil? Like I said in the video, the last time we won on Spanish soil was the 72 Cup Winners Cup in Barcelona, and that was not against a Spanish team. Our best result since the turn of the century has been a draw at Villarreal. So, you know, yes, I know we beat Betis at home, but I'm talking about on Spanish soil. So it is, you know, we have already proved we can beat Real Betis, that they are not this scary unbelievable team and I'll be honest with you the Spanish league okay yes this season is a bit of a stunner with Girona being top but realistically the three teams there that, that are major powers in, in the European game are FC Barcelona, Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid you know the other teams outside that don't carry the same threat as those three teams do you know they will try and keep hold of the ball they will try and use dominate possession that's the way that's the Spanish style is it the tiki toka style so Look, it is a case of Tiki Toka, no, Tiki Taka, Tiki, tiki Toka, something completely different. I do apologise, guys. My head has definitely, definitely gone there. Uh, <laughs> so, Tic Tac. Uh, yeah. Now, they don't like the English style, the British style, the Scottish style, the, 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 the Northern European style of in your face, get after them. Bang, you know, you know, go after them for minute one, be physical. They don't like that style. Now, if Rangers can go out there on Thursday and be physical and be in your face and be, you know, very much an attacking threat from minute one, then, which we know is a, is a problem for Rangers, we do struggle in the first half of games, then this is certainly something that I think could trouble Real Betis. Now, let's have a little look at Betis and their form and where they are at this moment in time. So this is their last few games and also their league position. So as we can see, they sit seventh at this moment in time in the in La Liga. Very surprisingly, Girona are top of the league after beating Barcelona the weekend. Barca down in fourth, some seven points off the leaders, which is pretty incredible indeed. Real Madrid, after their draw with Betis, two points behind league leaders at Girona. Could Girona shock the footballing world by winning La Liga? Real Betis, like I said, sits seventh. They've played 16 times this season, have won six, 
drawn more than they've won eight and lost two. Now, their last few games, they beat pa Las Palmas 1-0. Last time out in Europe, they lost to Sparta Prague 1-0. So they aren't great away from home. They're more a force at home. 0-0 uh, draw with Almeria away. A 2-1 a victory in the Copa del Rey over Villanovese. Don't know much about them. And then at the weekend, they did draw 1-1 with a very powerful Real Madrid team. So that is, that is quite a frightening prospect. They play a 4-2-3-1 formation. This was the team that they put out there at the weekend. One of their top players, Herman Pazela, was back in central defence. Mark Rocker, who's on loan from Leeds United, uh, been very good this season. Certainly someone apparently they're looking to spend around £11 million on this summer. East Co, another influential, Ayose Perez, uh, William Jose, Esarili. There are some very talented players, but they do have their injury issues. There are four, five, six players who are struggling for Thursday. Now, this, uh, they're managed by someone who has good European experience in Manuel Pellegrini. So their form coming into the game, you know, it is good. It, you know, it really is up there. You know, you look at that last few games, they've obviously, they've drawn a couple, they've won, uh, they've won one. It is very much, they are very much a draw specialist. So I think that's possibly something people are thinking, but to us, a draw is no good. We need to win the game. We need to go for them. Betis are not a European powerhouse. They are not a Spanish powerhouse. They are certainly not someone we should be afraid of. And at the end of the day, we need to go out there and I think be aggressive, be in their faces to really put them under pressure. If we do that, then we stand on an opportunity, I think, of getting the result and progressing. You know, if we finish third, we drop to the Euro Conference League. That's another podcast. I don't want to talk about that particularly at this moment in time. As I said, as I was talking about on the podcast last night, you know, I think the team pretty much picks itself for Thursday, given the injury problems we've got with Raskin and Jack and Lawrence and the fact that Michael Beale completely messed up the European squad. So for me, this is probably how we will line up on Thursday night. I don't think he'll pick a weakened team. That's not Philippe style. He wants to win every single game. So Jack Butland in goal. Outstanding, best keeper in Britain. Back four, I think, pretty much selects itself with Leon Balogun not in the European squad. John Suter not really coping with the left-sided centre-back position. So I think Tav, Goldson, D Davis and Barisic, who is the only left-back. There's a bit of a shout for, du for Dujon Sterling, but I do think, given what Philippe Clement has done so far in his managerial reign, he will go with Barisic at left-back. I think Sifuentes will play Thursday night um, and play alongside Lundström. Um, you know, that will change. Although he may experiment for the cut final, you never know. We may see Sterling or King there. Uh, behind the striker, I really hope that he goes in with McCausland. I want to see McCausland start. I just think he provides something that, that nobody else does. He's, he's direct, he's aggressive, he, he runs at people. You know, he's a quality player. Todd Cantwell on the 10 roll to create, to cause problems, to go where he wants, to pull the Spanish defenders out of position. Seema, wide left. You know, the guy's been one of our best players this season is certainly our best finisher is a goal threat from that left hand side and look no matter what you think of him and you know my feelings on him Cyril Dessas will start from because there is nothing else Kamar Roof's not fit enough to start and the sooner Kamar's gone from the club the better Cyril Dessas did you know you know I've criticised Dessas and I don't get any pleasure out of it I'd rather he comes in and scores 20 to 25 goals a season why because then that means Rangers are doing well you know, I don't want him to fail. I don't want any Rangers player to fail because why would I? Because if I want Rangers players to fail, then I don't want the best for the team. And all I want this team to do is to win. So, look, Dessas played well first half. I thought he put himself about well. I thought he, you know, led the line well. He scored his goal. Second half, he did drop off a bit. His hold-up play was poor. His passing was very poor. I think he did drop off. And it will maybe a case that we see Dessas for 60 minutes and Ruth for 30 minutes. But that, I do think, will be the team for Thursday night. Look, we'll obviously do more of a preview, look really into it, obviously, Thursday morning with the Matchday News, uh, Matchday News uh, video, which will come out. But look, this is a week we need to win three games, a week we need to really set, lay down a marker. I genuinely think that if we can win three games this week, this could be a springboard, a real launching pad for this team, not only for this season, but for the future and to relaunch Rangers to be the force that we should be in Scottish and European football. Look, guys, let me know what you think of the topics we've covered in the video this morning or this afternoon or this evening. It depends, obviously, when you've picked it up. Look, subscriber-wise, guys, at time of recording, we are on 3,907. We're only 93 away. That's, I mean, that seems a lot, but only 93 away from hitting our target of 4K by the 31st of December. Can you help us get there? Smash that sub. And as always, on the way out, two things I really need you to do for me. Number one, smash the like. Number two, 
remember always, we are the people.